In the previous videos, we worked with the materials and the lining in uh, ZBrush. So we saw how we can customize and set up the lights uh, using different lighting system. We saw how we can use three-point lighting and also how we can render uh, using the best preview render, which is uh, the best uh, if you need to do like 3D rendering, but also you have like uh, other option to create different effects. And we also use uh, HDR eyes or environment images to, to do a little bit of image-based lining. So to create a lining system based on an image, essentially. So we did this kind of um, photo montage with the, with the character and we tested different materials, like standard materials, matte cut materials with different types of lights and uh, lighting system. And also we saw the importance of reflections when we work with uh, uh, like reflective materials like metals and also the ambient occlusion. We talked about ambient occlusion many times and anti-aliasing, which, which are all part of the, the same uh, scheme, which is like getting to the final render at uh, the best of uh, what we can do in, uh, in ZBrush. So though, there are different tools, there are different effects that we can use. We can also use filters like in uh, Photoshop. We can also do adjustments to adjust the contrast and the hue, the saturation and so on. So this is another example here, and we can use a lot of like templates and demo uh, projects in um, in uh, in ZBrush. We have an entire folder of characters and uh, scenarios that we can use to start with. So here, this is another example with uh, HDRI and also light caps to create um, a lighting based on on the on the image that we used. And so uh, we will proceed in this video to talk more about rendering and how we can set up the, the most important things here to, to render our final image. So this is the final part of these three different elements, which are materials, lighting, and then rendering. So this is where everything comes together. And um, we're going to try also different um, experiments here with different models. Now, in my opinion, you can either create like, like something more uh, like an illustration or a technical drawings or a blueprint using your uh, models, or you can create something more realistic that looks, uh, you know, like a photo montage. It uh, looks like it's really there. Now, uh, we can use here in the projects, again, some of the uh, free samples that we can use with the, with the ZBrush. So I'm going to double click on this one, for example, and you can see this is looking like a technical drawing. So it looks cartoonish. So by, uh, you know, enhancing the, the black lines and having like this white background, we can get that effect. Now uh, we can see also that there are some materials that are specifically uh, set for that. So you have like tunes material, you have like technical drawings materials, and also you can work with the lining and fix these or adjust it as you like. So you can work like with the ambient and you can try also to work with the lights. And definitely you can have shadows there to enhance the shapes or, 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 you, or you can just turn it off, depending on what you are looking for, what you want to show to your uh, friend, to your professor, to your client. Now, also, this is pretty good uh, when you use these like flat lining and use only one light that light is going to affect essentially everything on that scene. So you can like color everything with one single color. And again, this is looking like a cartoon or illustration or like, you know, technical uh, representation of the model. Now, also, if we go here in the render, you have these um, like a fade uh, opacity feature you can see there it looks like we are coloring it like more um, looking like a drawing instead of a material and um, this is one way we can do rendering so it's kind of a technical again a cartoonish way we can do that now if you navigate here in the projects we can see we have the same um, robot but this time is um, is kind of more realistic now we need to get rid of this green color that we just placed in the render panel and well the what we can do is um, you know also we have some nice reflections here so probably there is a reflection uh, map or an environment map 
Now what we can do to test the realism is to run the BPR. So BPR again is the best option if you need to do realistic rendering, but we can also set up some, some parameters. And there you go, looks pretty realistic. Now uh, you wanna make sure you address also the shadows, the lights, the ambient occlusion, the anti-aliasing. So quickly, the anti-aliasing is this um, effect which is going to uh, like smooth those uh, edgy um, lines, the zigzag lines that looks like this because they this is uh, is due to the to the pixels. So the pixels in the screen, unless you have like perfect vertical, perfect horizontal line, they're gonna create this aliasing effect. So anti-aliasing is kind of um, hiding that defect. And that's a really important one to increase the quality. You can increase the quality of the anti-aliasing. And also in video games, you will find like similar settings to increase the quality. The other one is ambient occlusion. We talked about this many times and how you can achieve it, how you can get it in many different ways in, in ZBrush. And you will find this also in other render engines that uses like a realistic and um, uh, global illumination. Usually you will always find ambient occlusion because ambient occlusion it's really a, a real important uh, passage that the render needs to do in order to have that realistic effect. And essentially, it's going to enhance the details of your model. So your different parts, all the parts where the light uh, cannot uh, reach, and they're going to appear better. They're, they're going to be, it's going to appear better. So let's go to the Z plugin panel. And you can see you have also here another ambient occlusion tool which is a plugin. Uh, we can usually increase samples when we want to increase quality. And uh, that's, uh, well, you can increase the, the distance because I mean, occlusion is working like with the radius. So it's going to be like smaller or larger depending on the effect you wanna do. So just run here the, the plugin and just wait. And that's gonna like create that uh, ambient occlusion and should look more realistic then. Now there are other ways also you can work with ambient occlusion. Let's see with this other model here which should be a little bit better and a little bit more visible because this is a really subtle effect. It's almost not visible but it's there. So try to run it and you will see that some shadows will start to appear where the model is uh, less hit by light. So everything is about lining. Materials are about lining. Lights, of course, are about lining and rendering. Also, it's, uh, you know, lining is the, the most important thing you want to consider. So lights and shadows. Now, we, when we do our renderings, our final renderings, we can just play around with uh, poses. We can pose our models. We can create, you know, kind of a... Uh, sketch or a draft of what we have in mind so we can use mannequins here and you can see this is also animated this scene right here so if we click and drag we can animate the camera and also we have this expose animation like an explosion where it's showing us all the, the different pieces and then it comes back together and we're gonna uh, talk about animation in another video now we're gonna concentrate on the rendering now this one here again is uh, our gorilla, which is already in a pose because we decided that pose when we create this using these spheres. Now you can do that uh, using these spheres and then create your um, your skin on top of that, and then you can use it as a rigging. But uh, here I could be able to retrieve some of my uh, following skins that I created based on these Z spheres, and I can use these Z spheres as rigging. So the process to pose is either based on the Z spheres and the rigging, or you can use the transpose tools, and we're gonna see that later. Now let's start by doing an example of this. So I need to select a mesh that it's uh, kind of uh, similar. So this is a mesh that I created starting from the Z sphere. So 